Alright, hello YouTube, and any other Toyota forum this gets posted on. I have a 1998 Toyota RAV4, and I got the trouble code using my scan tool P0401, which indicates insufficient EGR flow. And today, with my vacuum pump I rented from AutoZone, I'm going to show you how to diagnose exactly what part of the EGR system is giving you this code. Okay, so there are three main components of the EGR system that all operate based on vacuum created from the intake. There's the main actual EGR valve right here, which as you can see from the back, uh, goes down, connects from the exhaust, comes up and when a vacuum is sent to this port right here, it causes the valve inside to open up, which sends spent exhaust gases into the intake. The second part here is the EGR modulator, which basically it sends vacuum that is obtained from the intake right there, sends a line that goes all the way down and goes to the third component of the EGR system which you won't be able to see down there because Toyota put it at the back of the engine for no real clear reason but it's called the VSV and what the VSV does is basically there's an electronic sensor in it and when the computer determines that the EGR needs to be opened from the vacuum sent by the modulator then it sends vacuum to the EGR it's those three components I showed you that make up the EGR system and from what I understand this applies to Toyota RAV4s made up until the year 2000 and also from what I've read on forums it applies to the 2.2 liter found in the Toyota Camry that about this vacuum pump uh, what you actually rent it comes with the actual vacuum pump here and this clear hose now both of these won't actually fit onto the uh, any of the parts of the engine to actually create adequate vacuum. They won't fit properly, so I found a bit of hose and snipped it on there. Now, for uh, for reference, the size is come on, focus, damn you! It's 0.156 by 0.245. I assume that's in inches. So to start testing which component is actually bad or broken. What you want to do is go ahead and turn the car on. So now the car's running, it's turned on. So what you want to do is take your vacuum pump, just take the end of this vacuum line, and attach it to that port right there. So now that that is attached on there, what you're going to do is induce a vacuum. And the results you want to see are that once you create a vacuum, it's going to open the EGR valve and the engine is going to struggle really bad. And in some cases, it'll actually die out completely. So you wanna, you'll see the engine visibly shake because it's about to die. So when you induce a vacuum, yeah. And then you just open the vacuum up let it run to normal. So I'll do it again. Yep, there we go. So the EGR valve is working. The next part, you'll attach to the Q port, which is on this side. And you won't actually be using the vacuum pump, you'll just need a gauge. And what you'll do is you'll open up the throttle to about 3,000 RPM and the vacuum gauge should read about 20 inches of mercury which I will try to show on here with just two hands so that's showing about 20 so that part is good. Everything is done, you can now turn the car off. 
Okay, so these test results mean applying a vacuum to this part of the EGR did not cause your engine to struggle out or die. It means that the exhaust gases are not adequately being sent into the manif into the intake in some way, which means that you could have carbon built up along the uh, along the exhaust passageway, or your actual uh, EGR valve could be at fault. Now, if doing this test on the Q port you saw no vacuum, it would mean that either the little diaphragm inside your modulator has a tear in it and is otherwise bad or is broken in some way. If your test results were like mine and after checking all your hoses and seeing that everything's good and connected where it should be then that would mean that your vacuum switching modulator is at fault which is unfortunately located way down, way at the back of the engine. And it can be pretty damn hard to get to, especially on a four-wheel drive model such as this one. I've seen on YouTube the best way to get to this VSV is on the passenger side front tire. You can either jack the car up and remove the tire to get to it, but if for some reason you don't have a jack or cannot jack the car up, then what you can do is turn the uh, wheel full lock to the left, and then just come in under here, and up in there you should uh, keep all of the vacuum lines down. If you have someone up top like wiggling the lines for you, then you can go in there and then you'll just be able to see the uh, you'll be able to see the VSV right there. Okay, so to summarize, turn on the car, connect your vacuum gauge to the EGR valve, induce vacuum, if the car struggles or dies, it's working, if not, the EGR is at fault in some way. Then next on to the EGR modulator, connect to the Q port, rev the engine to 3000 RPM, if you get about 20 inches of mercury vacuum, then that's working, if not, then that is at fault somehow, and if both of those work out, check all your uh, lines and hoses. If all that checks out, then by process of elimination, that leaves the vacuum switching valve to be at fault. I hope this video has been helpful, and feel free to share it and post it wherever you want so as to help as many people as possible with solving this problem. I understand it's pretty common, so yeah, thank you for your time.